Hello, thank you for joining us today. I'm Simona Reisek, San Diego and Imperial DAC committee member. I'm also a Los Angeles and San Diego SBDC export advisor and the director of global trade at Getting to Global. I'm here today with John Dunlop, San Diego DAC member and director of operations at ITF Global. Today we'll discuss all the elements of the purchase order trade document within the context of the EUCP Global Business Model Workspace, for short, EUCP Workspace. The global business model is used for managing international trade transactions online using electronic documents instead of paper. The EUCP Workspace documents follow the guidelines for electronic documents as originally published by the International Chamber of Commerce under the Uniform Customs and Practice for Documentary Credits Supplement for Electronic Presentation. These guidelines are commonly known as the ICC EUCP guidelines. The objectives of the global business model is to assure payment for the exchange of title of goods and services between buyer and seller. Assurance of payment is totally dependent on the parties to the transaction following proper transaction guidelines. John, the formal definition of the purchase order is the buyer's contract for the purchase of goods and services from the seller. The purchase order contains the price, delivery schedule, and terms and conditions for a specific purchase. Please explain to our audience the elements of the purchase order trade document. Thank you, Simona. The purchase order is a buyer task. The purchase order is often misunderstood as only providing the purchase price, quantities, delivery schedule, and terms of sale. This ignores the full 38 plus data elements that must be defined in an international transaction. The idea that a payment can be guaranteed by a third party, such as a bank or insurance company, is a myth. The buyer is responsible for payment. The purchase order template contains a checklist of the data elements that need to be defined to affect assurance of payment and title transfer. So the purchase order is the foundation for the trade transaction. Let's learn how a buyer's purchase order leads to a successful transaction. On this slide, we have the purchase order template that you can download from the EUCP GBM workspace. As you can see, the purchase order information falls into three categories. Transaction information at the top, followed by logistics information and ending with trade finance information. John, please walk us through the transaction information part of the purchase order. The transaction information defines who the buyer and seller are, what the seller wants to buy, and how he wants to pay for it. The following are the transaction elements from the Global Business Model Checklist. Transaction items one and two, the buyer and seller's name and address. Companies have different names and addresses for different purposes. Mailing addresses, registration addresses, warehouse addresses, bank account name, branch address, et cetera, et cetera. The names on the purchase order should reflect the name and address of their company that is associated with its bank relationship. This will become important later when the seller invoices the buyer for goods and services and their respective banks need exact wire instructions. It's important to note in the digital world to always add the contact's name, email address, and telephone number. Let's move to the description. Transaction items three and four, general description, detailed description and or specification. The purchase order has two descriptions for the goods and services it wishes to purchase. A general description and a more detailed description with specifications, quantities and unit prices. The general description needs to be a generic description of the goods and not contain unit prices or quantities. The information contained in the general description will be used to complete the transport documents. Long complex descriptions often do not fit into the space allowed in a carrier's waybill template, forcing discrepancies. Purchase orders are not required to be part of a negotiable document set and will not be examined. 
So John, it's important to note that the purchase order is not required to be part of a negotiable document set because it does not reflect what was actually shipped. However, it is an important trade document to the buyer and seller because it is considered the contract of sale. Let's move to the price next. Transaction item five, price per unit and currency. Price and quantity and or lot sizes should be specified in the purchase order. Normally, larger quantities and lot sizes provide for smaller unit prices. Transaction item six, mode of transportation, sea, air, rail, truck, or courier. The UCP recognizes five modes of transportation, sea, air, rail, truck, and courier. Each mode of transportation has its own transport contract for carriage data elements. However, only the Ocean Bill of Lading is an international title document, and the consignee is the owner of the goods it conveys. Title can be transferred by the consignee by endorsing the Ocean Bill of Lading to a different consignee. It is important to note that consigned Ocean Bills of Lading are not freely negotiable documents. Only non-consigned bills are freely negotiable. Consigned bills of lading are acceptable as electronic records under the ICC e-rules. Let's make sure our audience understands what happens when air, rail, truck, or courier modes of transportation are being used instead of the sea. In those situations, the transport documents are consigned to the recipient, so they are not negotiable. The Ocean Bill of Lading is the only transport document that could be negotiable. Let's move to packing now. Transaction item seven, packaging, <clears throat> bulk, container, or oversized deck cargo. This item refers to the description of the packaging in bulk, container, or oversized deck cargo. Bulk can further be defined in the size of the ship, loose, or bag size. Transaction item number eight, incoterms. Eco terms are referred to as international commercial terms. They are a set of rules published by the International Chamber of Commerce. All international purposes, purchases will be processed on an agreed eco term to define which party incurs costs and risks. Eco terms will be clearly stated on relevant shipping documents. Since the eco terms define which party incurs costs and risk, it is important that we understand the INCO terms in order to negotiate a transaction. Make sure to discuss them with your freight forwarder. The most current ones as of today are the INCO terms 2020. You always have to note the location after the INCO term and INCO term 2020 reference. Note there are a few changes from 210 to 220. You can find definitions of each of these INCO terms in the EUCP. GBN workspace. The highlighted changes from 2010 to 2020 as listed on this slide are that DAT is now DPU and FCA is now allows for bills of lading to be issued after loading. Let's move to the purchase order logistics information now, John. Purchase order logistics information is dependent on the eco terms selected for the transaction. <clears throat> the buyer or seller freight forwarder should be brought into the process as early as possible. The eco term defines whether the buyer or seller selects the company to handle the logistics. Freight forwarders are unsung heroes in international trade. They provide many functions besides providing freight rates and recommending a carrier. They also advise which documents and or certifications are required to import into the country of destination, arrange for container drop-off and pickup, and usually broker custom charges to name a few. John, let's go through each of the items under the logistics information checklist. The logistics questions include item nine, port or airport or place of embarkation. The port, airport, or place of embarkation is contained in the INCO term and must be specified. Item 10, 
port or airport or place of debarkation. The port, airport, or place of debarkation is contained in the ecoterm and must be specified. Logistics companies for the seller and buyer. The logistics company and or freight forwarder is selected by the buyer or seller, depending on the ECO term selected for the transaction. For example, FOB, freight on board, will be selected by the buyer. CIF, cost, insurance, and freight, will be selected by the seller. Transport documents required. The transport documents are used for many trade functions to include contract for carriage, title transfer, seller payment, assessment of port fees, and customs clearance to name the most important. All 175 plus trading companies have different local laws requiring different documents for importing into their country. John, I have another note to make. Um that the transport documents have in common minimum requirements to show one evidence of movement, the transportation document, bill of lading or airway bill, evidence of value, the invoice, evidence of content, the packing list, evidence of quality, the beneficiary or third party inspection certificate, and additional documents that may be required would be a certificate of origin, or fumigation, SGS inspection, export license. Um, let's continue now to the rest of the logistics items. Item number 13, partial shipments allowed or not allowed. Partial shipment simply means there's going to be more than one contract for carriage or way bill that makes up the total shipment. This is important because a total shipment under the UCP assumes the value and or quantity of units is within 5% of the value of the purchase order. The 5% can be increased or decreased with a mutual agreement between the buyer and seller. Item 14, transshipment allowed or not allowed. <clears throat> transshipment allowed for more than one mode of transportation involved to the final destination, specified by the INCO term. Many countries do not have a port for embarkation so the destination is inland and not to a port. Item 15, delivery schedule. The planned delivery schedule or availability of the goods. It is common to state the delivery schedule as 30 days ARO or after receipt of order. Item 16, quality specifications required. Many goods such as commodities require the actual specifications of the goods shipped. Thank you, John, for explaining all the logistics items of the purchase order. Um, now we are moving to the fun part, the trade finance information. Let's go to the next slide. Transaction payment method. The trade finance terms <clears throat> and conditions are dependent on the payment method selected for the transaction. In reality, there are fundamentally only two methods of payment credit or collection. All payment methods are either a credit or a collection. John, please walk us through the payment method. A credit means 100% of the transaction value is held by a third, a third party and is available with an escrow services company with documents when documents are presented and negotiated. Today, most escrow services are provided by an international bank. A collection means the transaction funds are available with the applicant, who is usually the buyer, when documents are presented and negotiated. Advanced payment and open account are actually collections. Advanced payment is a collection transaction with 110% with with deposit. Open account is a collection transaction with payment after delivery and title transfer. Both advanced payment and open account is a collection of funds from the buyer. Quick note, a credit means 110% of the transaction value, correct? Correct. So we have two methods of payment, credit or collection, but we have three trade finance facilities. One, a documentary trade payment, short DTP, which is a collection, a documentary trade credit, 
DTC, which is credit, and a documentary letter of credit, DLC, which is also credit. One of these three payment instruments may be selected to support the buyer's purchase order. Let's walk through each trade finance facility, John. The documentary trade payment is a direct collection managed under ICC, UCP 600, and EUCP guidelines instead of URC 522 and EURC guidelines. URC stands for Uniform Rules of Collection. Transport documents are presented, examined, and negotiated in electronic format. The buyer is given access to view the documents before payment. After payment, the buyer is given access to download and print the document set, which would include the bill of lading, invoice, packing list, certificate of origin, insurance certificate, SGS inspection, fumigation, and sinosanitary certificate. The paper original documents are sent by a courier to the buyer for customs clearance. 172 of the 175 countries still require hard copy documents for ocean customs clearance. Air shipments usually can be cleared with PDF copies. So let's take a note of this. The DTP, the Documentary Trade Payment, is the future of trade transactions. According to the 2018 ICC survey, 92% of all transactions globally can be managed as a documentary trade payment instrument using ICC e-rules. Next, let's move to the credit facility, the documentary trade credit, DTC, and the documentary letter of credit, DLC. The documentary trade credit is an alternative trade finance substitute for a commercial bank issued international documentary letter of credit. The documentary trade credit is issued and negotiated by a private company like a FinTech instead of a commercial bank. The funds used to support a documentary trade credit are housed with an international escrow company instead of a commercial bank. The documentary requirements and rules for reimbursement conveyed by a documentary trade credit are similar to a bank issued letter of credit under the UCP. Documentary trade credit offers similar functionality for usance, assignment of proceeds and transfer. The documentary trade credit is issued for self-liquidating trade transactions and not for standby credits. The funds supporting the documentary trade credit in escrow are used to buy the exporter's bill of lading, invoice, packing list and supporting documents. Documentary trade credit negotiation is done using electronic documents in PDF instead of couriered hard copies required by commercial banks. The documentary letter of credit, DLC. A traditional documentary letter of credit can be issued by a commercial bank under ICC e rules as of 1 July 2019. These guidelines allow for the electronic presentation of a negotiable document set of transport documents under International Chamber of Commerce Uniform Customs and Practice for Documentary Credits, UCP 600, supplement for electronic presentation. In effect, excuse me, EUCP version 2.0, in effect, 1 July 2019. The E rules are implemented using SWIFT tag 40E EUCP. The difference between a documentary letter credit and a documentary trade credit is the location of funds and the negotiating entity. Please note, the UCP is not a bank document and can be used by any public or private company as a guideline for managing a trade transaction. Let's move to the terms and conditions part of the purchase order. And before we do that, let's recall again the abbreviations we are using. DTP refers to documentary trade payment and it is a collection facility. DTC refers to documentary trade credit and it is a credit facility. And DLC is a documentary letter of credit and it is a credit facility. Let's go over every single item on the DTP, DTC, 
DLC terms and conditions checklist that you can see listed on the slide. Um, not all these items are applicable for each transaction. You'll have to determine which items will apply to your transaction. The payment facility terms and conditions are the same for all three facilities. Let's start with item one, issuing DTP or DTC. This is where the name of the company that is using the documentary trade payment or documentary trade credit is listed. Item number two, issuing DLC. This is where the name of the commercial bank that is issuing the documentary letter of credit is listed. Item number three, applicable rules. As John mentioned previously, the follow, to follow the EUCP workspace, the applicable rules to list here under item three is 40E EUCP latest version. The authority used for the EUCP workspace is the International Chamber of Commerce Uniform Customs and Practice for Documentary Credits, UCP 600, Supplement for Electronic Presentation, EUCP version 2.0, in effect, 1st July 2019. Item number four, applicant. The applicant, usually the buyer, to a DTP, DTC, or DLC is the entity with the funds to pay the beneficiary, usually the seller. Keep in mind that a trading company may be the buyer, but not the applicant to the payment facility. Item number five, beneficiary. This is where the beneficiary is listed. The beneficiary, usually the seller, for a DTP, D DTC, or DLC, is the entity that will benefit from the DTP, DTC, or DLC facility after shipment. A trading company may be the seller, but not necessarily the beneficiary to the payment facility. Item number six, currency and amount. This is where you list the value of the trade finance funds that are available to support the DTP, DTC, or DLC facility. The amount represents the sum of the cost of goods sold, freight and insurance, terminal fees, customs and value added taxes when applicable, carriage to and from the port of airport and trade finance service fees. Item number seven, percentage amount tolerance. Percentage amount tolerance for full shipments is considered to be plus or minus 5% of the total value or unit quantity of the goods and services unless otherwise expressed. Item number eight, available with. This item applies to the credit facility, so to DTC or DLC escrow. This is where the name and contact information for the international escrow company or commercial bank is listed. Item number nine, escrow amount. Escrow companies and commercial banks require 110% in escrow to support the issue of a credit. This is where you list the amount of the funds in escrow. Item number 10, av available with, this applies to the DTP collection facility. This is the location of the money. List here the name and contact information of the applicant purchasing the negotiable documents. Item 11, partial shipments. Make sure to note here if partial shipments are allowed or not allowed. Partial shipments simply means there is going to be more than one contract for carriage or way bill that makes up the total shipment. This is important because a total shipment under the UCP assumes the value and or quantity of units is within 5% of the total value of the purchase order and or credit. The 5% can be increased or decreased with a mutual agreement between buyer and seller. Item 12, transshipments. Make sure to note here if transshipments are allowed or not allowed. Transshipments trans allow for more than one mode of transport involved to the final destination specified by the INCO term. 
many countries do not have a port of embarkation. So the destination is inland and not to a port. Item number 13, drafts payable. Note here if the drafts are paid at site or certain days after. Make sure to define the date here. At site means when the transport documents called for are presented. Drafts can be used since days after a, spe a specified date, usually the bill of lading shipping date. However, if the use period is more than 180 days, it is no longer considered trade finance. Item 14, red clause, drawing of invoice value. The red clause amount, if applicable, is for funds allowed to be dispersed to the seller before shipment of the goods and services by presenting an invoice without transport documents, often used as a deposit. Many countries limit the amount of a red clause to 25% value of credit. Item number 15, we're about halfway through the page. Presentation period. 10 days is the default. So presentation period is the number of days allowed between the shipping date and the number of days allowed for negotiable document set presentation for payment. The default is 10 days for electronic documents or 21 days for paper. Item 16, Incoterm, place port. Incoterms are referred to as international commercial terms make sure to use the most recent published version of the Incoterms as of today is Incoterms 2020. Today, they are a set of rules published by the International Chamber of Commerce, which relate to international commercial law. All international purchases will be processed on an agreed Incoterm to define which party legally incurs costs and risks. Incoterms will be clearly stated on relevant shipping documents. The INCO term determines whether the buyer or the seller is going to pay for the freight and insurance from the shipping point to the delivery point. The INCO term must be used with the port, airport, or place to have any meaning. Item 17, third-party documents allowed. Check this item if the negotiable documents have been originated by someone other than the shipper that is allowed and can be accepted without discrepancy. Item 18, description of goods and services. List here the general description of goods and services. The general description needs to be as generic a description of the goods as possible and contain ideally no unit prices or quantities. Refer to UCP 600 Article 4B. The information contained in the general description will be used to examine the negotiable documents and complete the transport document. The less complexity, the fewer discrepancies. Long, complex descriptions often will not fit in a space allowed in the bill of lading template, forcing discrepancies. Item 19, detailed descriptions of goods and or specifications. This is where you list the detailed description. The more detailed description containing specifications can be conveyed in the buyer's purchase order. Purchase orders are not required to be part of a negotiable document set, as we discussed earlier. Item number 20, original electronic records to be sent to. This is very important. This is where you list the email address of the issuing entity of the credit or collection that will examine the documents. In the case of a documentary trade payment, it could be the buyer or applicant who issue his own DTP facility. Item number 21, paper originals to be sent to after payment. The original papers are still required as of today for custom clearance of ocean cargo for most countries and need to be sent to the buyer after payment, usually by courier. Item number 22, documents required for negotiation. This is a list of all the documents required for payment agreed to between the parties. The transaction documents used for many trade functions include 
contract for carriage, title transfer, seller payment, assessment of port fees, and custom clearance, to name some of the important ones. That was a lot of information, Simona. As we noted before, the transport documents required for negotiation have in common minimum requirements to show evidence of movement is the transport document, bill of lading or airway bill, evidence of value is the invoice, evidence of content is the packing list, evidence of quality, the beneficiary or third party inspection certificate. Additional documents that may be required include certificate of origin, sanitary, fumigation, SGS inspection, and export license. Let's go to the sample of purchase order slide. This is a sample of a purchase order. You all have access to this document on the EUCP workspace. We hope that our video and this sample will help you understand all the elements of a purchase order. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our presentation today. The assurance of payment and title transfer of goods and services in a trade transaction depends on all parties following internationally recognized and accepted guidelines. All trade documents represent a task to be performed. The EUCP workspace, the global business model, the ICC e-rules, online document sharing, face-to-face -face video, provide the transparency, clear communication, and trust for successful trade negotiation. The future of trade is happening today. We will see you soon. <laughs>